work with text in InDesign, there's actually something really important that we need to do. And the, the problem with, it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's sort of like a blessing and a curse. Uh, but InDesign is a smart software where it recognizes formatting from other files. So if I copied a Word document and it, you know, if, if I had bold and italics and all sorts of word formatting, it would want to place it in InDesign. But the problem with that is that InDesign sometimes has conflicts with these uh, formatting from other softwares and it's difficult to control it. So best practice is to strip or remove all of the formatting from this other content before you place it into InDesign. You basically turn it into what's called simple text or plain text, unformatted text. So I want to take all of the formatting and remove it. So what I want to show you is the process of doing that. So even, even though um, this is not Word, it still might pick up some of the formatting from the cascading style sheet in the web browser. So I'm going to select all of this text, if I can, all of this text in this uh, column from Hipster Ipsum. And I'm going to go to Edit, Copy. So I'm copying this text from Firefox. If I was in Word, I would copy the text from Word. Okay. So what I want to do next is I'm going to look in my dock. And in the dock, you should have this little icon that looks like a sheet of paper with a pen on it. This is called Text Edit. So when you click on Text Edit, it should launch the software. And it looks like this. It's a little simple text editor. So I'm going to paste the text in here. All right, so it looks a little bit more unrefined, which is fine. But I actually want to remove even more formatting from this. So once I place the text in text edit, you'll notice that text edit has a format menu. Let me do that one more time. Make sure everybody got that. I copied the text from the browser or from Word or from my email or for wor from wherever my client is giving me the copy. And I'm going to jump to text edit. And in text edit, text edit, by the way, is this little software. Looks like a sheet of paper with a pen on it. And I'm going to paste it in here. Now, once I paste it in text edit, so you can see I'm in text edit, I'm going to select format. And do you see the menu option that says make plain text? There it is. It's the third one from the top. This is going to remove all of the formatting off of it. And it turns it into what's called ASCII text. So it's a very simple form of characters. It took all the formatting away from it. Okay, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to go to Edit, Copy. So I'm copying it again, but in this case from Text Edit. Does that make sense? I generated the text in a different software. I pasted it into Text Edit. I removed the formatting by making it plain text. I'm copying it again, Edit, Copy. And now I'm going to jump to InDesign. So now that I'm in InDesign, I need to construct a text box. And I want to honor the columns. So I'm going to go to the T tool, the type tool. So you'll notice I click on that. And you'll notice that once I click on the type tool and I draw a text box, the type tool changes the control bar. So my control bar is now showing text-based features. All right, you'll notice that after I drew, let me do that again. Let me do that one more time. Go to the type tool, draw type box. You'll notice that the cursor is blinking in the upper left corner. So now I'm going to go to edit paste. Okay, there it is. I place the text in my first text box in the first column on the first page of my document. Okay, let's do that one more time. All right. Now in this case, look at my text box. Look at how I'm drawing it. Let me hit paste. 
What do you think about this text box? Any ideas, any comments, any suggestions? It's not aligned with what? The column. It's not aligned with the column. It's not aligned with the margins, and it's not aligned with the gutter. OK, so this is a really big deal to me. OK, now why is this a big deal? Because the gutters, the columns, these, these visual aids are there for a reason. They're there to construct, help me construct my document. So the question is, why am I not honoring that? And that, to me, is a problem. So if you want your column to be more narrow, and you want greater padding from the edges, then that means you need to modify your columns and gutters to the dimensions that you want it to be. Do not just randomly draw text boxes. That's what an amateur does. Um, I want to teach you best practice, what a professional does. So I set up my system, my layout first, and then I place my elements within it. So um, I want to share with you that the act of constructing columns and gutters within my document is a form of a simple grid. It's literally a grid system. And in graphic design, we learn about simple fixed grids, and then we learn about complex modular grids. Not in this class, but I want to introduce that this is really a grid system. And the grid system is there to help me. And I want to sort of leverage it. I want to use it. It's a tool that I can use. And right now, I'm not doing that. So I want to select this text box, and I'm going to align the text box within the column. Does that make sense? So I'm mentioning this because every once in a while, I'll get projects from students, and it'll look kind of like this. It's close, but it's not aligned. OK? And that's, that's an error. So I want to make sure that you guys understand that if you're setting up columns, margins, gutters, and all these things, you should be honoring it. Okay. So at the bottom of my text box, you'll notice that I have this little overset text indicator. There's more text than what this text box can hold. That's what this little red box indicates. So I'm going to click on this little red box, and you're going to notice it places the text in my cursor. Let me do that again. I click on this little red box. It places the text in my cursor. So now I'm going to hover near the next column. And when I click on the next column, you'll notice that it snaps. To the column now it didn't it didn't snap perfectly in this case so I can just correct that but the point is I'm using the text box and I'm snapping it along the columns to ensure accuracy and ensure that I'm using this grid okay does that make sense everybody all right I'm going to show you one more feature and then we're going to take a break so the text is actually driven by a number of characters. And these characters are called hidden characters. They're invisible. You don't see them normally. So for example, I'm gonna, remember I like to ask them questions in the class? Right, I like to ask them questions. Right, so between here, what key did you hit? What key would one hit to create this space right here? Spacebar. So that actually has an indicator. Now, you'll notice that out here, it looks like I have a paragraph, right? So right here, what, what key do you normally hit to break into a new paragraph? Enter or return. OK, so that has its own character as well. So how do I see these? Well, these are under my type menu. And they are referred to as hidden characters. So you'll notice that at the bottom of the list, what does it say right there? This is under the type menu. What does it say right here? Show hidden characters. Show hidden characters. So look, in UI, top of a list, super important. Bottom of a list, super important. So look, hidden characters, super important. All right, so I'm going to turn that on. And now you're going to see this is all the formatting 
that's driving the text and how it appears. Does that make sense? So when you set text, best practice, you should activate the hidden characters. So that way you see and understand how the text is being manipulated. These little visual indicators will help us out. Okay? So please activate your hidden characters. I want to take a five minute break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some best practices with text. And then the last thing that we're going to do today, the last feature we're going to look at in our class is something called text wrap. To recap, we place the text in text boxes that are honoring the margins and the columns and the gutters. And we activated the hidden characters. Okay, so um, what I want to do now is I want to um, design the way that my text is going to look. I want to alter the way that my text is going to look. And I'm going to show you, um, I used to work with an art director, and a, um, she wasn't an art director, excuse me, I'm using the wrong term. She was a lead designer, and um, she used to use this term, she would call it the cheater method. So in other words, there's a better way of doing this, there's a best practice, but it, it's going to take me a long time to show you the best practice. So I'm going to show you her hack, it's her sort of design hack. So she called it the cheater method of design. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to select this paragraph to design it, to change the way that it appears, okay? So I want to show you some of the type selection features that's in InDesign. So let me zoom in here a little bit more so you can see this. 